Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you all for coming for the service. And um, it will not go in vain. We are going to sing in a song that is called Not by Might, Not by Power, but by, yes, the, by, but by the Spirit of God. It is in line with Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 1.
thy power, thy spirit God. Send your spirit, Lord. Not by might, not by power. Spirit God, not by might, not by power, by your Spirit God, send your Spirit God. Not by power, Lord, nor by might, O oh God, but by your Spirit. We come to you this morning and we cry out to you, Abba Father, that you send down your Holy Spirit that your Holy Spirit will minister unto us this morning. Lord, we pray that even as we come to sit at your feet this morning, that we shall be blessed because we are here. Come change us, Lord. Come touch us afresh, O oh God. Come and speak to us in a new way, O oh God. Father, we desire more of you and less of us. We desire more of you, Lord. Come, send down your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And as we continue to worship, let us remain standing as we sing that hymn, Far, Far Away. take a posture that is comfortable for us even as we pray. 
and together we shall pray together saying almighty God our hearts are open before you and there is nothing we can hide from you breathe your Holy Spirit into our hearts and cleanse our thoughts so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Lord, have mercy on us and write these laws in our hearts. And friends, even as we come before a holy God, we know that our walk with him has not been perfect. But we know and we are reminded that if we confess our sins before him, he's just and he's gracious to forgive us. So let us mention our sins to him individually. Mention that sin. Mention those sins and come with a repentant heart before him. Because we know that when we approach his throne of glory with a repentant heart, a broken and contrite heart, that pleases him. And collectively, let us use that prayer of general confession, saying that the almighty God Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, creator and judge of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in many ways, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, and in what we have failed to do. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. Forgive us, O Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us that we may serve and please you in a new life. Live to your honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And friends, may the almighty God, our heavenly Father, has promised forgiveness to all who repent and turn back to him, now forgive you and free you from all your sins. May he renew and strengthen you to follow his good and preserve you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we continue in prayer, this is the, the fifth Sunday in the season of Epiphany. And uh, when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, Paul says, To those who are called, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, the collect of the dead. Give us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and to do always those things that are right, that we who can do no good thing without you may have power to live according to your holy will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and at least wave to them and welcome them? And say you are most welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made that we will rejoice and be glad in it. And as we rejoice and as we celebrate, the mustard seed is going to lead us in a session of praise and worship. Let's arise, church. Praise the Lord. Uh, yes, he has stolen my mojo. I was going to tell you to wave to your neighbor, but we've already done that. We thank God for that. Hallelujah.
ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you lord come and change our lives one thing we ask of you one thing one thing that we desire that as we worship you lord come and change our
Indeed, may you take our trust where it is without borders, O oh God. Father God, take us to that place where we can trust much more than we have ever trusted before. So that we will be able to walk on waters, O oh God. So that we will be able to do the impossible, God. Because we know that what appears to be impossible in our sight is possible with you, O oh God. Father, take us to that place where we can see hope beyond afflictions, where we shall see hope amidst what surrounds us, O oh God. Father, we call upon you this day that you will minister to us in a special way. Lord, come and minister unto your people. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We thank you and we bless you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed and everybody say, Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Come on now, let us be seated. And as we sit, we are going to invite the most uh, beautifully dressed people in this place and the best people in this place. And those are the children. And as the children are coming up, I'm going to request the choir to play us a very good song. And I'm going to request the most beautiful woman in this room to come and pray for the children. I think she knows herself. <laughs> this is none other than Lydia. I think she's the most beautiful, you'll agree. Yes. Okay. The children, where are you? And the choir. Give us a... Uh... We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching. We are marching. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We 
really beautiful. Come on, let us appreciate them. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. Children, hands together. Wonderful. And then we shall ask the parents to stretch our hands towards our children. And let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for these little angels. Jesus, while you are on earth, you told your disciples to let the little children come to you. This morning, we bring your children back to you. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit. Please touch each one of them, and may your praises be made manifest upon their lives. Lord, even as they go out to school each morning and come back home, we pray for your divine protection upon their lives. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless the mommies and daddies, aunties and uncles, and their guardians with all the resources they need to look after your children. And we pray as they go to their church, we pray, dear Lord, that you speak to them. Open their eyes so they can see you. And please enlighten their understanding that at this tender age, they may understand you and give their lives to you. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Yes, we are going to escort them as we clap for them and as we sing with them. Yes, we are marching, children, this much as we I'm go going to gonna ride, glory train. the first reading. Praise the Lord, church. Our first reading is taken from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verses uh, 1 to 5. Am I right? Verses 1 to 6. And it says, the heading is discerning false prophets. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the antichrist which you had is coming into the world and indeed is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint and the world listens to them. But we belong to God and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we now arise and we sing that song, Amazing Grace, as we receive the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace that taught 
continue to stand as we read the gospel. The gospel is according to St. Matthew, chapter 7, reading begin from verse 15. Glory be to Christ our Savior. Matthew, chapter 7, reading begin from verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits, are grubs gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thorn bushes. So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit. Tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you are workers of lawlessness. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother Walter likes uh, bullying me because every time he comes here, he puts that mic up. And now it is in my so I have to, to bring it back down again. But praise the Lord. Amen. Shall we take this opportunity to thank the choir? <laughs> that is the Mustard Seed Choir, and I think they have led us amazingly well in the presence of God. If you have been ministered to, let us thank them a second time. Thank you, thank you. Uh, at this particular moment, I would like to know whether there are any people that are worshipping with us for the first time. Do we have any visitors in the house? Those that are worshipping with us for the first time? Yes, please stand up for recognition and let us uh, welcome him, the UCUA. You are most welcome. Please feel at home. We are also happy and delighted. I think this is the only chapel which has a sitting bishop. And so our sitting bishop is here, uh, the right Reverend Joel Obetia. Uh, bishop, you are most welcome. Yes, he's seated because he's the sitting bishop. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, we do have our bishop. And then I can see so many people in the house. I would like to introduce my dear wife, uh, the most beautiful lady in the whole wild world, my world. Not necessarily your world, but in my world. Yes, because the vice chancellor can disagree. Yes. We are also delighted this morning to have our mama and our papa for this university. The vice chancellor. Come on, let us welcome them. And I think for you who have not had the chance to hear the vice chancellor speak, let me give him at least one minute to greet you, because if you don't hear him, I might not get a salary at the end of this month. times I look like this when there is no corona. It's a joy to meet all of you and to worship with you, with my wife of 25 years. Um, on 28th December we celebrated 25 years of non-stop honeymoon. And so it's a pleasure to worship with you. Thank you for inviting us to greet you. 
and I have greeted you in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those who don't know, our mama, our mama is called Mama Pesh. So when you find her, you know Mama Pesh is your mother. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, friends, the ushers are moving around and they are giving us this leaflet. This leaflet is talking about what it is that we're going to do next week. Uh, starting with tomorrow, we are having our mission week for the semester. And the theme for this mission week, uh, or the title we've given this uh, mission week is the discernment week. It is the discernment week. And our theme, as drawn from John 8, 12, will be that Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world. And as you receive the flyer, you are going to see that there are many activities that are going to be undertaken during this Make sure you do not miss. And uh, all staff members, and I have seen many staff members here, are reminded that every Monday morning at 7.45 a.m., we do lead this university by starting in prayer. So we have a weekly devotion in the chapel, all staff members with their spouses. And tomorrow, it is going to be an interesting devotion because we shall have a guest from ACFA, because we are going to be kicking off the activities of the mission week. This mission week, we are going to have visitors around. We are going to have teams from ACFA. We are going to have teams from Ndeje University. We are going to have a team from St. Luke's Church, Ntinda, and as guests, and, and, and as hosts, as we are hosting those guests, we are asking each and every one of us to please come and participate in this mission week. It will be very shameful when we have teams from all over, but we don't have a team from UCU. We need a team from UCU. We are requesting each and every one of you that if you can, please purpose to give at least three hours of your time this coming week to be able to witness in lecture rooms, to be able to witness on the streets, to be able to witness in the halls and hostels of residence, and to be able to witness one-on-one -on -one with our colleagues in this university. For those who are interested to take part, to actively take part, please do register with any of our wardens. Where are our wardens? Please put up your hands so that you can be seen. Our wardens are dressed with a purple sash, so those are our wardens. Look for them and register. Also, next Saturday, on the 12th of February, our chapel community has been chosen to lead the diocesan monthly prayers at the prayer mountain at St. John's Church, Makerere. So we are all invited to try and go to that prayer mountain as Thorncroft Chapel Chagwe, Uganda Christian University, so that we can lead the rest of the diocese in prayer. We would like to be represented in big numbers, and for those that would like to go, please register with the ushers still. This is how we were able to give last Sunday. The offertory was 1,503,600. The tithe was 298,000. The tithe that was brought to the office was 441,000 while the tithe that was taken or that was sent directly to the bank was 900,000. Sunday school gave a total of 80,600. And at Kampala campus, we collected a total of 92,500. Friends, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us appreciate ourselves. Uh, this morning, I bring you greetings from the chaplain, our dear chaplain, the Reverend uh, Engineer Paul Waswasembilo. He has not been able to worship with us because he is a guest preacher at Chitende. And I think uh, the, the, the service has started now because it was supposed to start at 10 a.m. Please pray for him as he ministers to God's people that God's people will hear the message for the season. But this morning, 
we do have a number of other clergy here that are helping us in ministering. Uh, one of them is the Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Mukeshmana, who is uh, uh, Reverend Emma is a lecturer at the Bishop Tucker School of Divinity and Theology. Uh, Reverend Emma, you are most welcome. I think you know Reverend Walter. Reverend Walter is seated in the corner. But we also have an interesting, interesting man of God. And that is the Reverend Paulson Tumtejereze. I think I should give Paulson's name to Walter to read. <laughs> yes, but Reverend Paulson is here with the, Reverend Paulson is here with his dear wife, Helen. I think uh, they are up there in Sunday's, uh, the children's church. They are here and they are here to minister to us. Reverend Paulson is going to be speaking to us about that important topic of discernment even as we start the discernment week. And I think there is no other better person to speak to us about this topic than Reverend Paulson because he has done what is called apologetics. And so as a person who has been schooled in apologetics, he will be able to speak to us. Reverend Paulson is the coordinator for education uh, within the Kampala Diocese, the Diocese of Kampala. So Reverend Paulson, you are most welcome. Uh, when he came in the morning, uh, we, we, we were talking, and then he, as a true Muchiga, he, int he intimidated us. We were about three men in the office, and he said, if you know you are not a father of four girls, then don't speak to me. <laughs> and when we counted, we still have much less. <laughs> My friend Walter still has zero, but he has now a target. He's looking for, he's looking for four. Praise the Lord. And as we prepare to receive God's word, may we now arise and we sing that song softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling.
Jesus, we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we'll be convicted to listen to you. You calling, inviting us to come home, to be in a living relationship with you. Lord, as I speak to these, your people, may you speak to them and give them an invitation to come to you. So, Lord, speak, for we, your servants, are listening. In Christ Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is good. That's his nature. We give him a big clap. Thank you. Thank you. It is uh, such a humbling moment for me to be a part of God's work, especially as uh, we take off this unique week, uh, the discernment week. First, I'd like to thank all the women here for being discerning sisters. Because when Dr. John called for the most beautiful woman to come and pray for the children, I was really ready for a holy chaos here. Because honestly, you are beautiful. Amen. You exercise discernment because you read beyond what he said. He said, I am beautiful, but there is someone that Dr. John is calling for. I was just imagining if one of the students had walked here, what would Lydia do? I was just like, wait a bit. Thank you. Give yourselves a big, big hand clap. That is discernment. Thank you. Thank you. So we are taking off a very special week the discernment week. In the midst of your busy schedules, in the midst of the many things that we can do, I pray that you'll take off a time and say, wait a moment, God. What am I up to? What is the world up to? Our sharing this morning is centered on the theme, uh, equipped with spiritual discernment. Equipped with spiritual discernment. Friends, we live in a highly polluted, distorted world. The world market has many distorted products, distorted people, distorted lifestyles, distorted relationships, distorted degrees, distorted products on sale. There is also distorted Christianity. You see, in some worlds, when someone says, I am a Christian, I go to church, it actually means they are like Christ. They are born again. But for us here, being a Christian actually doesn't mean for us here that we are born again. We may go to church, but we have no relationship with Christ. Distorted Christianity. We live in a world where we are asking questions what does the real look like? A world of the real and the world of the fake is here before us. It is up to us to choose which is real and how do we exercise that and live a lifestyle that demonstrated that that is real, that is authentic, and be able to distinguish this from distorted, the fake products and lifestyles that are around us. How do you make a godly choice in a world of distortions? How do you choose a Panasonic from a Panasonic? How do you choose Colgate toothpaste from Golden Gate toothpaste? I once walked to a shop and from a distance I could see a Cool, something cool, get toothbrush, and I was like, I want that one. I reached home, and guess what? It was golden again. I said, Wait a bit. I picked Colgate, but this is golden again. Has it changed in between the shop and home? What has happened? There's a, a student that was once asked where they go to study, and this student said, uh, I, I, I go to uh, ICU in Mukono. How do you distinguish you see you from I see you? Even in our speech, we are distorted. 
And so, dear friends, as we take off this week, it is critical, it is important for you and I to wait a moment, to withdraw from everything else and begin to ask yourself these questions. How do I live an authentic life in a world of lifestyles that are distorted? How do I live and exercise authentic biblical Christianity, spirituality, in a world where there is a lot of this distortion of God's word, of our expression of worship? How do you choose the right church? How do you choose the right spiritual mentor? How do you choose the right marriage partner? Marriage is distorted. How do you tell a real marriage? How do you tell a relationship that has real fruit? So today as we share in this subject, equipped with spiritual discernment, we pray that indeed the Lord will guide us, will convict us, will empower us in making godly choices, godly decisions for authentic worship and an authentic pursuit of Christ. Amen. That each of us will have an answer as to why we worship God the way we do that this week will put off everything else because we do notice that actually without we making the right choices on these life matters, we actually go astray and we are yet to make huge losses. Our text of First John chapter 4 verse 1 to 6 comes to us timely. And in his time, you see the Apostle John who writes this and his other contemporaries wrestling with matters of spirituality and not allowing the wrong to penetrate among the people of God. And we pray that even we today who have received this faith shall faithfully, authentically pass it on. And when the saints go going, Lord, I want to be among the number. Amen. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints. If we are going to truly carry on the apostolic work handed over to us, we must stand for this faith and get it out of the distortion in which it is. Brothers and sisters, I pray that we shall receive this with love from God. During his days, we read that there were kinds of cults that were actually penetrating the church. And one of the leading cults that was penetrating the church in John's days is a group called the Gnostics. And these Gnostics taught many things, but two of them. One, they taught that matter is evil. All that is physical is evil. So you look around yourself. Whatever is physical is evil. Did you look around yourself? Have you seen anything in the physical? The Gnostics would say that is. I don't know that you'll agree that the person is seated next or in front of me. Any one of us would qualify in this description of the Gnostics. Never. But people actually followed that. And because everything that is physical is evil, number two, they distorted the person of Christ. Because Christ comes physical, human, and divine. And because he's physical, human, he's coming from a holy God, so the Gnostics were saying, this Jesus has never been human. Because there's no way God will take on a physical state, which is the evil state. So the whole aspect of the incarnation, Christ being born in our midst, ceased to make sense. And so Jesus never, rather well, God never lived in this world in his son, Christ Jesus. And that distortion actually took quite a number of people into great confusion. Further still, this kind of misunderstanding had worse results, and the worst results are here. Because my physical is evil, my body therefore does not matter. What matters is the spiritual life. 
So they promoted the spiritual life above everything else. Therefore, the physical body would engage into immorality because it doesn't matter as long as I am worshiping God in spirit. I don't know whether this kind of life or teaching of spirituality is familiar with any of us, especially those of us that live in Kampala or live in Uganda. Quite a number of movements have come up that are saying you can engage into all kinds of bodily indulgences so you can abuse your body, you can use your body to do whatever it wants to do and you remain in touch with God. You have not sinned. Isn't it important, therefore, dear friends, that we take off a week, we take off a time, and ask ourselves, the things that we believe, the things that we propagate, are they true? And if they are false, that we make a round turn and get back to the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that we shall take this week seriously. So in John's days, we read that there are all kinds of spirits. The prophets, false prophets, have gotten into the world. And verse 2 says, this is how you are going to recognize that there is a false prophet. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, Jesus came as human, is from God. The one that does not acknowledge Christ as having come in the flesh is not from God, and that is the Antichrist. And this is how he dealt with the Gnostics. He was not shy to face the circumstances of his time. And I pray that none of us here believers in Christ will be shy to face the circumstances in our time. Some of the circumstances that have hit the academic world is when students get into an examination room and they write the exam in tongues because they are spiritu spiritually filled. And just writing this is, is physical. And I pray for the lecturer to mark in the spirit. Situations where students will get into an examination room and pray for three hours. Three hours they are praying that maybe the Lord will do something, that there will be a divine encounter and they will get an automatic promotion, an automatic A. These things are actually real and they are in Uganda, they are in our universities. So time has come, dear friends, for us to face the truth and to live in the truth. The apostle is therefore calling us that there are these people in the world and you that are in Christ should be different from them. He's saying, test the spirits so that you may be able to recognize the spirit of truth from the spirit of falsehood, as we see in verse 1. Test the spirits to see whether they are from God. And at the end of verse 6, this is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood when you exercise a test. And this exercise of this test is what you call discernment. Discernment Friends, helps us to recognize what is true and what is false and tell the difference. Discernment is distinguishing, separating these things that are before us. It is doing thorough examination and involves using one's mind, one's heart, and spirit. It involves a lot of energy. It involves choice. It involves determination that you do not just engage into anything, but rather exercise this discernment. Examine it. You apply wisdom, apply understanding, and actually wisdom, understanding, insight, and discernment could be cousins. That before one makes a choice, before you engage into anything, apply discernment. So how does one get discernment? One, discernment is a gift of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 12, we see that the Spirit of God gave gifts as he chose. It's up to him. 
And I'm going to ask uh, my brother, Dr. John, to give us uh, some gifts. We're not saying that you are the spirit of God, but uh, help us give gifts. And please don't give to yourself. Uh, I can see some are quite attractive and others. Okay, please do, do give gifts. Um, uh, and uh, as we read in um, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. In verse 11, all these, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And those of you that have received your gifts, please do quickly open them. Because uh, first of all, just raise uh, your gifts, raise them, and we see which, which of these, okay, there's one the other side, I think you may not easily see them, uh, but some look very attractively in a wrapped, and uh, others look a little bit dark. But anyway, do, do open them. Do open your gifts, and please do that quite quickly. So I was reading verse 11 of First Corinthians chapter 12. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Praise the Lord. Uh, mom, 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 uh, Wow, I can see your neighbor is admiring your gift. Uh, what, what are those sticky notes and the multicolor? Beautiful. Has uh, some other person opened their gift somewhere? Yes. Is that ahead of lady? Yes, peaceful. Um, what is your gift? You have a the discernment written on a paper. It doesn't look as attractive as, as what your neighbors have. Um, we need to help our daughter open her gift. Yes, uh, she's, uh, she's almost there. So we have an attractive gift here. We have the discernment gift there. Ra raise your gift, dear daughter. Wh what is it? A Nataraj pencil. Wow. So you can go and enjoy school. <laughs> and so gifts have been given. And as we see, as we read in our First Corinthians chapter 12, especially verse 10, to different people, another is given miraculous powers. That sounds very attractive, like that of our mother here. Wonderful colors. To another, there is the gift of prophecy. To another, the gift of speaking in tongues. Another, to interpreting these tongues. And the same verse 10 says, another, distinguishing between the spirits. Distinguishing between the spirits. And you can look at this text and ask yourself, which of these is more important than the other? What is important is the spirit has chosen to give gifts. Amen? Amen. And is giving to all as he wishes for the common good. But it's very possible for our daughter to say, mine is a pencil, I'm going to use it. It's very possible for mama to say, I have stick notes here, I can read my notes and attach and, and give directions to my reading. It's very possible for peace to say, of all things, please raise your gift and we see, oh my good Lord. It's, it's, it's some kind of paper written on the word discernment the gift of discernment. And here we are told the gift, thank you, the gift of distinguishing tongues. The gift of distinguishing spirits. And so, do we want to get discernment? Do we want to get to know how we make the right choice? How we examine the different options before us until the real from the fake. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit that we pray to the Holy Spirit for the gift of discernment. Amen. Now, it is possible again for some people to say, you see verse 11 says, he distributes them to each one just as he determines. And it appears that for me, uh, the Spirit hasn't determined to give me the gift of discernment. Because some of the people that are propagating the false teachings around them, they come in, in the shape of we are spiritually filled. And then you ask, how is that you can be spiritually filled and you are indulging in sin with your body? And they will say, hey, that has nothing to do with my body because my body as the Gnostics did promote. Spiritually, I'm with God. The flesh is wicked. 
when we distinguish, when we demarcate, when we separate the spirit and the body. And remember, Christ calls us, love him with the whole of our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with our spirit, and everything we are. Christ doesn't distinguish our spirit and our body. It is that our body, when not in Christ, gets into living a carnal life. And that's what makes us evil. But when we are in Christ, our bodies are as good as the spirit. Praise the Lord. So how do we, number two, get discernment, number two? And in case you want to use this as an excuse that uh, the spirit hasn't determined to give me the Holy Spirit, number two. We have evidence in the scriptures of people who prayed for discernment. And one of the people that prayed for discernment is the King Solomon. I pray, dear friends, that as we look at the example of Solomon, that you and I will yearn and cry to live lives that are under the discernment of God. So King Solomon, in the first Kings chapter 3, has an encounter with God. And God asks him, what do you want? Just imagine God asking you and I what we want. God asks also what he wants now. I'm tired of my small car, you understand? When Solomon was asked, he said, I have a huge responsibility before me as a young king. In verse 9, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, Solomon tells God, So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? That discernment will help King Solomon in exercising rulership. Solomon knew that he needed a discerning spirit in his today life and responsibilities. And you quickly, when you read verse 16 and on of First Kings chapter 3, we see how King Solomon had an encounter as a young king. Quickly, two prostitutes come to him. Both had children. One of them sleeps on the child and the child dies. And in the night, because they're living in the same house, she goes and picks the other person's child and begins to, to, to breastfeed the child. And when they wake up, this particular woman says, where is my child? My child was alive. My child is dead. How is it possible? And the one who was breastfeeding the child begins to defend herself and they actually run to King Solomon and say, King, we have a big issue before us. How do we solve it? If King Solomon had not asked for discernment, this was going to be the failure, first failure of his being a king. Friends, as you look up at this, young woman here, when you have a lineup of Mr. Handsomes, praise the Lord, Mr. Handsomes, how do you choose the right one? How do you choose the one that the Lord has brought? Hey, dear brother here, when the beautiful ones are all around you, when you are the prince and all these princesses are around you, how do you choose the right one? We that are in leadership, how do you choose, how do you make the right choice amidst all these other choices that you've got to make at the end of the day? How do you offer governance? We see King Solomon, friends, bringing these women. He says, bring the child that is alive. And King Solomon says, let's get a panga. Now that none of you seems to be the mother, or both of you seem to be the mother of this child, we are going to cut the child in two, two. Shh, and then we take half, and the other will take half. That sounded foolish for Solomon. Because when you cut this child, the child will no longer be alive. Solomon had discerned something. And the one whose child had died, and was still in this child, says, yes, let's do that. It is equal to the call that doctor made as we started. The most beautiful wife come here. Excuse me, you know that you are beautiful, not so? But you don't have to come here because she's there. And King Solomon, when this other woman said, let's chop the child, let's cut the child. And the one who owned the child said, please don't touch. It is okay. Let her take my or let her take the child. King Solomon sat in his seat and said, I now know the rightful mother of this child. Seemed to be a simple equation, but it was hard work 
for Solomon. So discernment is needed for everyone, young or old. And when we pray for it like Solomon prayed for it, God gives it to us. For read, we read in James chapter 1 verse 5, If any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. It will be given to you. Amen. But God, I need wisdom regarding this lineup of activities, this lineup of relationships, this lineup of individuals, of decisions that I ought to make. God, give us wisdom. God, give us a discerning heart. And number three, in exercising discernment, that you look for the fruit, as we read in Matthew chapter 7, that we shall know them by their fruit. What has become out of what they have done? What is the evidence of God's, God's hand blessing them? When I'm choosing the right church, I need to look at the fruit of the church. What is the fruit of this man of God? And unfortunately, it is possible that we human beings continue to live this life, but we do not actually exercise this discernment. I pray, dear friends, that each one of us here will take off special time this week and gain skills in exercising discernment. And so back to our text in First John chapter 4. Two things for us from this text. One, that when we have a discerning heart, when we have a discerning life, we are able to distinguish the spirit of truth from the spirit of falsehood. The real from the distorted. The people of the word, the people of the word, the believers, are distinguished from the people of the world. That while everyone says this is Christianity, there is authentic Christianity. This saves us from distorted relationships at different levels, marriage and work. And so as people of God's word, as believers that carry the light of Christ, we are easily distinguished from the darkness that is all around us, the darkness that is in the world. And you read the word world in this text about five times. One, the false prophets have gone out into the world. In verse 3, that this is now the world, these people are already in this world. And in verse 4, that he that is in us is greater than the one in the world. The world listens to them. The world listens to those that are the false prophets that are in the wrong spirit. And this world is the fallen world. It is the world of darkness as we see from Genesis chapter 3. It is the world that is lost. However, for us who are in God, we are people of the word of God, Christ Jesus, the light of the world. Hallelujah. So we need to live lives that shine to the world. And this is how he says live lives that will shine in the world. Number two, when you are with the spirit of discernment, you are able to gain confidence in who God has made you. Amen. Amen. You are able to stand in Christ Jesus, not about what is in the world there, but who God has made me. That I know Christ in me is greater than the power of the sitting bishop. Amen. That Christ in me is, is, is greater than any other miracle that has been performed. That Christ in me can bring healing to my circumstance. Hallelujah. That even no, when no other person lays hands on me, Christ in me is greater than those that are in this world. Do you actually believe, dear friends, that Christ is greater than Prophet Mbonye? Do you believe that Christ is greater than any cultic teaching around us? And so we don't have to go to them. Christ is greater than me, greater than any reverend, greater than any person. Christ in you is greater than than the people, than the forces that are in the world there. Here is the challenge, dear friends, that many times we look to ourselves and we realize that we are not able. For me as a clergy, 
One day I sat and said, God, looks like I will not compete with the other ministers in this Kampala. Will people actually ever come to my congregation? And God led me to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is humble. Christ has never held a banner marketing himself. In fact, the more he hid away from people, the more they came to him. Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It has, time has come for us as Anglican ministers to gain confidence that God in us is greater than our theology. God in us is greater than everything that we put before us. Hallelujah. Christ in us, dear friends, is greater than whatever things are threatening us out there. I recently tested myself and I discovered that actually I have the gift of prophecy. I was sharing with a particular deacon, and this deacon told me how somebody came to his office and this person was sick. And the deacon said an archdeacon prayer. You know archdeacon prayers? An archdeacon prayer. And maybe the person was healed. Hallelujah. It's not about you, it is about Christ in you. That confidence that I can pray for somebody and they get healed. So I went to visit one of our pastors, and uh, she's, she was serving in a, a highly challenged community. And as we prayed, I said, sister, I, I, I feel God saying that he's going to make a way for you. And that actually, I feel one of these days there'll be a car parked in your compound. And uh, praise the Lord. And um, after that visit, two months after, the sister was transferred. And she came to my office and said, serve in the bishop's office said when and it was an abrupt transfer not by the sitting bishop but by the real bishops and uh, <laughs> so the transfer came dear bishop as you know and the sister came to me annoyed angry and saying you said in that compound will be a car but you told the bishop to transfer me how can that be I said sister I'm not even aware that you've been transferred and uh, a few weeks after on her farewell, the church in a challenged community, Rosira Prisons, gave her a brand new UBL. And she took a picture and sent it to me. I said, your prophecy has come true. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know what? Christ in us is greater than the one in the world. So we as ministers, we should exercise confidence in speaking from as Christ has led, not as you've been led. That we speak into people's lives and actually God accomplishes it. The challenge is when I become greater than Christ. And I want to head to my ending this way. That all these miracles you see people performing are actually signs. There are either signs that God has given them the gifts, but many times it is possible for us to concentrate on the gift and forget the giver. So, mom, don't forget me. <laughs> anyway, and so we concentrate on the miracle and forget that the miracle is pointing to Christ Jesus. Discernment helps you and I to go beyond the sign to go beyond the miracle and go to the source. That we go beyond prophet money and go to the source, God himself. That we go beyond bishop somebody, we go beyond the reverend and go to God himself. There are very many people that have missed being in Uganda Christian University. They only pride at having seen the signpost of Uganda Christian University. And one of those people, by virtue of my responsibility as education coordinator, I promote Uganda Christian University. I carry flyers. I do this. I do this. And when some people touch, they say, yes, we are at it. But actually, they've never been to Uganda Christian University. The signpost shows you where the university is. Come on, go an extra mile and go to the university yourself. Discernment helps us to say there is the real thing beyond the sign beyond the miracle, beyond the prophecy, beyond the speaking in tongues, there is the real person, and that is God, that is Christ. So it is our prayer, dear friends, that as we take off this week, 
we will all grow in distinguishing the right spirit from the wrong spirit. Amen. That we will grow in confidence in being who we are in Christ Jesus. Because here the apostle tells them in verse 4, Dear children, you are from God. You have overcome the world. Because the one that is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. And so don't be shaken by the one in the world. Don't be attracted by the one in the world. But rather, see the one in you, and that is Christ Jesus. I said my last, but doctor, allow me to read these seven uh, checkpoints that A.W. Toza gives as to how we can discern right and wrong, false and, and, and right. I'll read this very quickly. One. A.W. Tozer says, how does the teaching affect my relationship with God? Is God magnified, glorified, or is God diminished? Number two, how does the teaching affect my attitude toward the Lord Christ? Does it magnify Jesus? Does it give him the first place? Or does it suddenly shift from my focus onto myself and my experience. I am alone. Everyone has left me. God doesn't care. How does the teaching affect my attitude towards scripture? Does the teaching come from or agree with the word? Does it increase my love for the word or my love for the world? Number four. How does the teaching affect my self-life? Does it feed myself? Does it feed the self? Does it actually crucify the self? Does it feed pride or humility? I'm sure when we've seen some of us, the televangelists or some of us clergy, not some aspect of pride, that reverend is moving in the, pro that is prophet reverend, you understand? And, and you know, I, I make it a thing about myself. Number five, how does the teaching affect my relationships to other Christians? This is important. Does it cause me to withdraw, find fault, exalt myself in superiority? Does it lead me to genuine love for all that truly know Christ? How does the teaching number six affect my relationship to the world system? Does it lead me to pursue the lust of the flesh like the Gnostics? The lust of the eyes, the boastful, boastful pride of life, does it lead me to pursue worldly riches, reputation, and pleasures? Or does it crucify myself? Does it crucify this world and the world behind me, the cross before me? Number seven, how does the teaching affect my attitude towards sin? Does it cause me to tolerate sin in my life or to turn from it and grow in holiness? Any teaching, A.W. Tozer says, that makes holiness affect, uh, that, ho that makes holiness more acceptable and sin more intolerable is genuine. That at the end of the day, we should hate sin and only pursue holiness and the love of Christ. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Let us pray. We are praying using the words of Solomon. From Proverbs chapter 3, verse 21 to 25. Solomon writes and says, My son, do not let wisdom and understanding or design discernment out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. There will be life to you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Lord, we pray that in the midst of fake things around us, 
that you'll give us the spirit to discern and tell what is real, what is authentic. In the midst of the distortions and the darkness around us, we will be the light. Because your word is in us, your spirit is in us, and in you we are greater than the people that are in this world. You in us, we are greater than the forces that are around us. Lord Jesus, how I pray that each one of us will have this special time to hear you speak to us, that you'll be able to make right choices for our worship, in our work, in our relationships, that in all you'll be glorified and exalted through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Come on, let us appreciate Reverend Paulson once again. And let us appreciate God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, Reverend Paulson. Uh, this has been rich. And uh, two points have caught my attention since morning. The first one is about the gifts. Um, the first point I noted is that discernment is a gift and we ought to ask for it. And in the first service, the people who gave, up, who gave out the gifts started from here. And I was seated here and I was preparing to receive a gift because I was closest to them. But when they were told to go and give out the gift, they left me here and they gave other people. And even this service, when I came down there, nobody was asking for the gift. So I ended up just giving any, anyone. But I learned that you do not have because, because you do not ask God. So we need to ask for the gift of discernment. We need to ask. If somebody had asked me, I would have given. Now I don't know what I learned because I had told the reverend that I'm going to ask in the second service. And now he told me to give instead. Now he said, oh, I wouldn't ask myself. So, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll reflect on it. But the second one is that discernment helps us to take us beyond the signpost. Because in many cases, we stop at the signpost rather than going to the one who is giving the signs. So many times we are mesmerized by the signpost rather than the person behind that signpost. Lord, we pray that even as we continue to discern, we shall go beyond the signs, we shall go beyond the wonders, and we shall see God for who he truly is. In the gospel according to St. John, John tells us that Jesus Christ did so many signs and wonders. In fact, for him, he doesn't call them miracles. He calls them signs. And he says, if he had written them down, the book would have been filled. But he mentions only sign, seven signs. And says, but these signs are mentioned that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ. And so discernment will take us beyond the signpost to the Christ, to Jesus the Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And one of the tools that has been used throughout the ages to discern is a nice sin creed. And so I'm going to encourage you to stand up and using this spirit of discernment that is upon us, we mark ourselves and we see how well we are doing in terms of what we stand for. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and earth is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and is spoke through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Can we take a posture that is convenient for us and we continue to pray and Reverend Emma will lead us in intercessions. As we meditate, as we pray, as we come closer to the Lord, let us sing this chorus. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has trouble. Yes, Lord, we are here before you. We want to recognize that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords, oh God. We are just mere human beings who will pass away, but you alone will remain. Father, I want to thank you so much for the love. I want to thank you so much for the way you continue to care for us, oh God. We say thank. When we meet again like this, and we reflect and we think about two years ago, Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you so much, oh God, for allowing us to meet again. And thank you so much for healing our world, oh God. And we continue to pray that, Lord, the way this pandemic came, let it go the same way. Because we still believe that your hand, your healing hand, is always upon us, oh Father. We thank you and we honor you. Hallelujah. Father, we commit our families into your care. You know each one of us. We know, you know where we come from. Some of us are having sick people. Even some of us have lost their dear ones. But in all, Lord, we want to glorify your holy name. Those who are sick, wherever they are, even if they are in the midst of us here, Lord, we pray that you heal each one of us, oh God. Those who are in hospitals, Father, we pray that your healing hand will continue to be there. Use the doctors and the nurses in a, miracle way, in a miraculous way so that, Lord, your people will receive your healing. Hallelujah. And, Father, we are praying for Uganda Christian University. Thank you so much. for giving us opportunity to be part of this station. Thank you so much, Lord, for calling us to come. Some of us are teachers, others are students. 
Lord, we uphold this institution into your care, O oh Father, that you come in every office. Let your presence be there, O oh God, so that those who come to see us, they will see you first. Let us be good ambassadors, O oh Lord, so that by the end of the day, honor and glory will be back to you. We pray for this discernment week, the mission week, that the Lord you continue to prevail in this place. We are praying for the teams which are coming from far and from near to come and evangelize us, oh God, that really you will use them accordingly. And Lord, we are praying for ourselves, those who are here, that Lord, you continue to prepare our hearts to receive you, oh God. And Father, we are praying for your church, the church of Uganda, Anglican church, you know the archbishop, you know the bishops, you know every Christian, oh God. Father, we pray that you come and you continue to make us worthy and pure so that in everything we do, we continue to honor you and glorify your holy name. We are praying that, Lord, you intervene, especially in the debts the church is having. We do remember to pray for the church house debt, that the Lord miraculously pay it off so that the Lord, by the end of everything, we will be able to glorify your holy name. And Father, we are praying for our country, Uganda. Thank you so much for its beauty. And thank you so much, Lord, for the way you have been protecting it. Hallelujah, we thank you. And Lord, we are praying that you continue to give us peace and continue to protect it, oh Lord, from every angle, from north, from west, from south, and from east. Even here in the central, oh God, let your peace prevail. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. We honor you. And we want to say that, Lord, as your servants, make us humble. And as even we move from here, Lord, we shall continue to have a fellowship with you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even as we continue in our worship, we are now going to honor our God with our gifts and offerings. And as we do so, the choir is going to lead us in African praise. Good morning, I praise Lord Church. May I request you to stand up so that we worship our Lord in African way.
in your life. Keeping God's commandments, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to comfort you. Listen to what our Savior Christ says to those who truly turn to him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I give you rest. Here also what St. John says, but if anyone does sin, we have someone who pleads with the Father on our behalf of Jesus Christ, the righteous one, and cast himself into the means by which our sins are forgiven. Rejoice and lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. O Lord, Holy Father, everlasting God, it is not only right, but also our duty to give you thanks at all times and in all places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the saints in heaven, we praise your glorious name forever saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and the earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, Lord the Most High. Amen. You may kneel or may sit. Together, a prayer of humble access. We do not come to your table, merciful Lord, Trusting in our own goodness, but in your mercy, we are not good enough even to eat the crumbs that fall from your table, but you never change. Your nature is always to have mercy. We therefore humbly ask you, gracious Lord, to let us eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, so that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his and our souls washed by his precious blood, and that we may forever dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for giving us your Son to suffer and die on the cross for our salvation. As we receive the ble bread and wine in the way our Savior showed us, may we truly receive his body and his blood. The night he was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. After supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this. All of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this whenever you drink it in memory of me. Together, O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. May the body of Christ preserve you in eternal life. And may the blood of Christ preserve you in eternal life.
our Father taught us, let us now join this prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily food. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forevermore. You may stand for the glory. Together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, and we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You who are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We continue, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice, send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the peace of God, which is greater than we can understand, be in your hearts and remain with you so that you may always know and love God and his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace to love and serve the Lord. We go in the name. We want to thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And we pray that you will continue to be active during this discernment week. And as we go out, let us now ask our prayer to lead us in a recession of him. Thank you.